Hello and welcome. My name is Carsten Kümmel. I'm a live sound engineer for more than 20 years, specialized on film music, classical productions, crossover productions, most of them with orchestra and choir and soloists and bands in the big arenas all over the world. Besides that, I'm a professor for public address and live recording at the University of Applied Science in Darmstadt, close to Frankfurt. This video about the proximity effect is my video version 2. Why version 2? I want to apologize. In my first video I made a mistake while measuring a switchable microphone switched to the omnidirectional polar pattern close to the loudspeaker. I want to correct this mistake and I want to thank the colleague who found out and who told me. Thank you very much. The proximity effect. What is it? When does it occur? And when does it not occur? So, generally you can say it occurs as soon as a microphone has a certain amount of directivity, which means cardioid, hypercardioid, figure of eight. And it does not occur as soon as your microphone has an omnidirectional polar pattern. For example, here I have a pure omnidirectional, it's the KM183. This one does not have a proximity effect. And I have the KM184, you see, besides that, it has slots behind the membrane, which give the microphone a directivity, and this one has a proximity effect. But let's have a listen to the proximity effect. A rise of the low frequencies depending on the distance between the sound source and the microphone. Therefore, let's switch to the TLM 107. Right now it's adjusted and switched to a polar pattern of a cardioid. And now, okay, let's have a listen. Now you hear the microphone and I move the microphone closer to my mouth while I'm speaking and you can hear that the low frequencies raise far more than the higher frequencies. And this is the proximity effect. Okay, let's switch back. So, I, it's not, I don't only want to have you listen to the proximity effect, I want to show it and to measure it. And therefore, I want to measure all three microphones, first in a distance of 50 centimeters to the speaker and then in 10 centimeters to the speaker. And then we can see in the frequency diagram how the proximity effect shows up. And some other measurements I want to do. With a cardio microphone, which is supposed to have a proximity effect, I want to give it a certain angle to the sound source. And let's see what's happening then. And then, of course, a double membrane microphone. It works with two membranes which are cardioid and the omnidirectional uh, polar pattern is a combination of these two cardioid membranes. Does it have a proximity effect? Yes or no? Let's go out in my garden and let's measure it there. Why in the garden? Very simple, there are no reflections. Let's go, have a look. Now we are in my garden and I want to show you what I'm going to measure. So here we see the KM184 and our sound source here, the KH80 DSP, now approximately 60-50 centimeters distance. That's the first measurement what we are doing and we are listening to it as well. The next measurement is how does it sound like in a distance of approximately 10 centimeters and this we will repeat with all the microphones and at the end I want to show you as well how is it with a cardioid microphone when the sound is coming from the side and as well with a switchable microphone the TLM 107 switched to an omnidirectional characteristics. Let's have a look. Now we have the cardioid microphone, the KM184, in a distance of 50 centimeters to the loudspeaker. 
What we see here is the phase response. We are not interested in that right in the moment. But here we have the frequency response and we see clearly a beautiful linear, more or less linear frequency response of the cardioid microphone. Let's move it to a distance of approximately 10 centimeters. Now we have a distance of 8 to 10 centimeters from the microphone to the loudspeaker and we see a very clear rise in the low frequencies, especially when we compare it to the 50 centimeters line, which is this one. So we have at 80 hertz, we have more or less 8 to 10 dB rise of the low frequencies. That's the proximity effect. Let's compare them and listen to both of them. Here the KM184 in 50 centimeters and here in 10 centimeters. I think that makes it very clear what the proximity effect is about. And now let's turn the microphone. We keep the distance of 8 to 10 centimeters but we give the microphone an angle of 90 degrees towards the loudspeaker. Let's see what's happening there. Let's turn on the pink noise and let's see. So, what we see is, this is the line which represents the proximity effect on zero degrees and this one is the measurement with the microphone angled 90 degrees. Oh, we see, we don't have proximity effect anymore. Why is it like that? As I said before, the cardioid microphone is working 50% as a figure of 8 and 50% as non-directional. We all know a figure of 8 does not record sound in an angle of 90 or 270 degrees. So the whole figure of 8 part is missing. And omnidirectionals, they do not have a proximity effect. And that is why a cardioid microphone recording the sound from 90 degrees, they do not have a proximity effect. And where can you use it for? Imagine recording guitars, amplified guitars. So you're, the microphone, you're normally very close to the cabinet, so you have a proximity effect. If you like that microphone position, but it's still a little bit boomy, simply angle the microphone to the speaker and you will have less low frequencies. You can use it as a tool. Okay, let's go now to the omnidirectional microphone, the KM183. So here we see the frequency response of a KM183 uh, omnidirectional microphone, a pure omnidirectional, in a distance of about more or less 50 centimeters in front of the speaker. So let's go and place it closer. Here we have the frequency response of the omnidirectional microphone in a distance 8 to 10 centimeters and you see no proximity effect. Now let's switch to the TLM 107. First we start with the characteristics of a cardioid, 50 centimeters. Here, the TLM-107 switched to a cardioid characteristics at a distance of 50 cm. And now, let's move it closer. And here we see a wonderful picture of the proximity effect. We can compare the TLM-107 at a distance of 10 cm to a distance of 50 cm. A clearly rise of the low frequencies. Now, let's switch it to omnidirectional and repeat that. This is now the frequency response TLM 107 omnidirectional characteristics and now let's move it closer. Will there be a proximity effect? Yes or no? Now we see the frequency response of the TLM 107 omnidirectional 10 centimeters away from the speaker. 
this time we can't see such a clear rise of the low frequencies. So the proximity effect cancels out on both membranes, which are used right now. And uh, let's go to the extremes. Let's go as close as possible. Now the TLM is positioned as close as possible to the sound source and we see a slight rise of the low frequency. So in the extremes a switchable microphone switched to omnidirectional characteristics. They have a small proximity effect, by far not as extreme as if switched to cardioid characteristics. But there is. But as soon as we move the microphone a little bit away, this effect will cancel out on both membranes of the switchable microphone. Thank you very much for your interest. I hope you enjoyed version 2 of my video about the proximity effect and I hope to see you in my other videos. See you. Bye bye.